name of my ancestors. Peace, Father, and always welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities of Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me. I am known as the Mighty One, Angel Snub Number Seven. I am also your soul brother number one. Before we get into our conversation, I would like to send a shout out to our soul brother, O'Shea Duke Jackson. He was nice enough to shout out this ministry in a video I was watching not too long ago it is only right that I also send a shout out to that brother of course we have difference of opinion of course we are different period but this does not mean that in some way we cannot be civil with one another and come together on what we have in common in order to attempt to solve the problem that we find ourselves in this group of people called black. This group of people that call themselves African American or or Moors or Hebrew Israelites or Black Muslims or Black Christians or Republicans, whatever you want to call yourself, it's so damn confusing. This is why an identity is needed so that all these things we can fit all these things that we call ourselves under one umbrella so that we can become a people. Until then, we are in our tribes. You are in your, you are in your black Muslim tribe, your more science temple tribe, your Christian tribe, your patriotic American tribe, we are in our tribes. We are tribal. And as long as we are tribal, those who have learned how to live under one identity, one common purpose, one common goal, those who are able to do that will have an advantage. And we will always be their victim. We will always be something, a people that can be easily exploited easily vulnerable, vulnerable to anything by those who are able to do these things. So a shout out to our brother O'Shea Duke Jackson and his platform, the Negro Batosphere, I believe that's what they call it. To a recent video our brother done he was speaking about Lisa Ray and how Lisa Ray blamed black men for her failed relationship in fact many women blame black men for their failed relationships and their failures as women. This has much truth, but also it has another side. I want to make very clear, for me, I am always going to ride with the one 
who is the underdog. When it comes, or when we speak about the racist Caucasian people of this nation and ourselves, I'm gonna ride with the black man and woman in America, the descendants of slaves, born in America, having melanated, dark skin, with African, Aboriginal, or other, against races. We are the underdog. I am going to ride with those who seek liberation, those who have been done unjustly, those who have been fighting under oppression. I have to ride with those like myself who suffer under these circumstances, living in this type of environment. I have to ride with them. So, I am going to ride with Lisa Ray. I'm going to ride with the soul sisters. I'm going to ride with the black woman. I'm going to ride with my sisters because they are the underdog. They have been living under oppression. They have been denied justice, not only by the racist, but, but by this black man. I'm going to bring another side to the story that O'Shea Duke Jackson just simply ignores because he's a male. That's why he speaks the way he does. Because he's a male. So I don't care what my gender does. I don't care how they behave. I really don't give a damn. I'm gonna ride with my gender. Just like many Caucasian people. They know what their people have done. But because I'm white, I'm going to ride with my people, whether they are good or whether they are evil, I don't matter good, I'm going to ride with them. You're not interested in justice. You're not interested in what is right. You're only interested in what is in the best interest of yourself. So that means that the black man is an unjust person. That means the black man is an oppressor. That means the black man is wicked. You said this about the white man or the Caucasian people because of their actions and their activity, you call them devils and they are wicked. They're demons. The black man that has turned, turned into a devil. He ain't always been that way. We gonna talk about that real quick. You want to cry, Brother O'Shea, and you want to feel sorry for your gender when your gender, there should be no tears in this case for them. I want to tell you something, and the reason why I take the position that I take personally I remember as a little boy, I don't know how old I was, four, five, six, I don't, I don't really remember. I remember as a little boy, myself and my siblings, I saw my daddy, my sperm donor, this supposed to be man. fighting my mother and myself and my siblings we are too little to do anything the only thing we can do is try to hit him with our little fist to tell him to leave my mama alone now of course from the viewpoint of O'Shea Duke Jackson he might say what did your mama do my mama ain't did a damn thing. How do you know that? My mama did not do a damn thing. 
She dealing with a bum who gets his thrill and get his power from beating up on women like, like a whole lot of black men do right now today because this cracker kicking y'all in the ass. And so, since this cracker is kicking you in the ass, then you go home to your woman and your children and you beat up on women and you beat up on children. That's what these bums do. My mother didn't do nothing to that guy. She never cheated on that man. She did everything she could to make him happy. It wasn't good enough. And this is what I seen not only in my family, but I seen it in the neighborhood and the women that I was around. I would always see a black woman crying. I would always see a black woman in distress. This was the 1960s. The late 1960s. So this tells you how far back it can go. And it was going on before I was even born. I would see these sisters always crying and I would ask them about what's going on it was always that damn black man he was the one always behind it these black men being abusive and foul and nasty to our sisters cause they have no power the black man on TV this cracker kicking him in his ass for the whole world to see. And the only thing you can do after he kick you in your ass and you fall on the ground is pick up your hat and dust off your coat. Then you go home and beat up on your woman and your children. I'm not going to ignore that, O'Shea. What did the women do? Our sisters have always loved this black man, loved her son, loved her husband from slavery. She was with us and backed us up. Matter of fact, the black woman loved you too much because she should have let you fight. But she was scared that you lose your life. She should have let you fight and not try to save your life. Let you stand up against this enemy. But she didn't know. She had no idea. She didn't know. So I watched this growing up. When I was a when I was a teenager, I remember in the locker room. And these young boys we was 15 16 years old and they was talking about their girlfriend and this was the early 1970s I heard my I heard my gender I heard other boys yeah man I'm going to go see my, I'm going to go see my hoe tonight. See, what really made me angry is one of the boys, he was the boyfriend of a young lady that I had a crush on ever since I was in grade school. And he's in the locker room bragging about what he do calling her a hoe. Yeah, my, my bitch do this for me. My hoe do that for me. Now here we are, teenagers. Where are we learning this? Who, who is teaching our boys to call our girls, our wives, 
and our girlfriends, hoes and bitches. This is what? Who is doing that? You got the black man who has, who no longer sees the black woman as a woman. He done turned her into a hoe and a bitch. Where, where did he learn that from? Because he's free. He's supposed to be a free man. Where he learned this stuff from? He learned this from the Caucasian racist man. Because now you free. By the time the 70s roll around, this black man watched a lot of porno flicks. He's into prostitution. He no longer respects womanhood because his example for manhood is the pick of wood. So here I am. Not because somebody taught me. I was raised around my mother, my sisters, my aunts, and I had respect for my females. Nobody taught me nothing. I do not want you calling my mother no hoe, no bitch, my sister. So I'm not gonna call another person sister or mother hoes and bitches. I'm not gonna do that. I, I know it came from black men because black men approached me telling me about women's is hoes. And you're supposed to, you need to spread your seed. Go out there and screw up every woman you can get your hands on. This comes from the black man. Where did the black man learn this from? Well, we already know where he learned it from. He learned it from his masa. He want to be like his masa. Because that's what the Caucasian man do with his woman. She's a hoe and a bitch. And he takes his woman and prostitutes her. Puts in the strip club. Put her, in, put her naked in magazines. She's walking around here in the public with a piece of string in her backside. And this is what you do. This is this is where you learn your manhood from. And you learn your manhood from the Bible. And where did you get the Bible from? Got it from the cracker. That's where you got it from. You get your manhood from these woman hating religions. If you're gonna tell the story, O'Shea, let's tell the whole story. Let's go, let's go a, a, a little further back. Let's go back to slavery. I never understood this mentality by people who are slaves, but they are trying to live a life like they're not slaves. I don't understand this mentality. But you have a, a slave woman and you have a slave brother. They are in love. She respects him equally. He respects her equally because they are equally in bondage. She knows what's going on and he understands what's going on. They are both slaves. What make me happy? I love you. What make me happy? I love you, sister. I love you, brother. Let's get married. So you have a slave brother and a slave sister because they are in love, even though both of them are somebody's property. 
let's jump the broom. So they jump the broom and all the slaves are happy. You are now man and wife. You are still slaves and you are somebody property. So on your honeymoon, <laughs> woo! On your honeymoon, here come the slave master. I want your wife. What is this slave man gonna do? I want your wife. This, sl this slave man cannot even protect his wife. Where you going, boy? I want you to stay right here. I don't what you what you, what what you mean, Master? You stay right here, boy. And here you are as a man. You watch this demon, this piece of garbage, get on top of your wife that you just married. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Yeah, that show was good. I like that. And the slave master make you watch. It's not over yet. <laughs> oh no, it's not over yet. Come here, boy. What you want, Masa? Come over here, bend, bend, bend over. What? You heard what I said, boy. It's your turn. And he make your wife watch what he do to you. Both of you ain't nothing but property. And you got this demon violating both of you. He make his, he make your wife watch what he do to you. And you better not say nothing. And then he get finished and he leave. And the only thing you can do is cry to each other. A wife and a husband in slavery. So because both of us, male and female, both of us understand violation. Both of us understood injustice. You would think that both of us should be in this fight together. So now, we move up the timeline. I want to remind you of something. This, went, this type of behavior, this rape of male and female went on for hundreds of years. It wasn't for four, it wasn't for four days, four months, four years, 40 years. This went on for hundreds of years. Your children, husband and wives, being raped for hundreds of years. So now we move up the timeline to a period of time, now, the Civil War is over, and you're supposed to be free. You learn how to start doing a little something for yourself. And when you first get set loose, not free, because of what you went through together as an oppressed people, male and female, there's a certain respect 
that the male has for the female and the male and the female has for the male. But now things are starting to change because y'all free now. And you learn how to read. And the Bible say that the male is the head of household. This is the beginning of, separa of your separation. Religion, the Bible, is a book to divide and cause trouble. It even says it in the Bible. It talks about the separation between the daughter and the mother and the son and the father and the husband and the wife. And now you exceed because you have been indoctrinated with religion and religion was created not by God but by these woman hating men. Now you start to see the black man turning on his woman. That's the beginning of it. And instead of viewing her as an equal now you telling your woman, you need to sit your ass down. This is no longer our house. This is my house. I'm the head of household. What I said, go. Your only example for manhood is the Peckerwood. The same, the same man that raped you in slavery, now he's your example for being a man. And now you begin to treat your wife and your children the same way the pickle would treat his. In the nation of his all praise is due to Allah. Woo! History will back up everything that I'm saying. This woman, even though you began to treat her like trash, still back you up, still support you. And the abuse begins. You come home from a hard day work dealing with these racist Pecklewoods and you start taking it out on your women and children. The abuse starts. The inequality starts. You start to see her as some type of slave instead of an equal a person that just came out of the same misery and now you want to you want to make her miserable and be, and the bible this religious garbage causes her to tolerate being treated in an inferior position i never heard my grandfather in a two-parent household I never heard my grandfather tell my grandmother he loved her I never did I never heard my grandmother tell my grandfather I love you what the hell y'all together for goes on all over the country they are together because that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to get married have a bunch of children and what they did they were sharecroppers and that's what they done 
I did not see any happiness. I was around people, the two-parent household. Y'all keep talking that crap about the two-parent household. I was around people. I never saw this love that y'all talking about. I never saw, I saw a, a, an abusive man most times that run this show. And the woman is just there because she's a Christian, she's been indoctrinated with that religious garbage and she tolerated. Cause you know, God, God frowned upon divorce. So you force yourself to be in these abusive relationships. And they are in these abusive relationships for years. And they are not happy. This is not to say that there are those who are in these marriages and they are exactly, they are exactly, they are the example of what we believe marriage should be. This is not the case for a lot of us. And a lot of these older people would tell you. They just live this life because that's the way things are supposed to be. Find you a woman, find you a man, get married, have children. That's the way things are supposed to go. Get a job, glory, glory, hallelujah. Are you happy? No. So the black man started abusing our sisters for the same reason you disrespect and abuse the sisters to this day because you live it in racism, white supremacy, and you got a system kicking you in your ass. And you cannot do nothing against another man, so you take it out on women, children, and the elderly. That's what these men do. If they are not trying to destroy black womanhood, then they talk about, oh, the elders didn't do this, the elders didn't do that. Then they attack old people. What do they accomplish? Not a damn thing, nothing. But when another man stepped to these, these pieces of trash, they back down. When another man stepped to him, cause that's the, that's the way of the coward. Just like these Caucasian people. As long as you are North Korea, as long as you are Iraq, Iran, as long as you're a small country, they big and bad. You don't see them stepping up to China. They're not gonna step up to Russia like that because they cowards. That's the way of the cowards. And this black man used them for an example. And he's the same way they are. The white man is a coward and so is this black man. When another man step up to the plate, they back off. But they real tough when it comes to women, children, and the elderly. Or, or, if they can catch you and you don't have a weapon, they think that you can't defend yourself. They'll step to you. They're cowards. If you're gonna tell the whole, if you're gonna tell the story, O'Shea, let's tell the whole story. So, We're going to fast forward to the 1970s, late 1960s, 1970s, you got black power, you got soul power, you got the rise 
of the feminist movement. You do know that women was denied participation in, in the Black Panther Party. They had to fight to become part of the Black Panther Party. Even if you are in the nation of Islam, they don't want you to fight. You don't just sit back, have babies, and be a cheerleader. Black women want to fight. Black women want to stand up. Black women are warriors. She is not just a baby maker. But see, when you're indoctrinated with that religion and all this other garbage, that's all she is. And when you look at all this black power, black first, and all this other stuff, that's all she is. That's all you are, sister. Lay up and spit out babies like you a damn rabbit. You don't really have no brain. You can't think. That's all you are. Sit back and make babies and be a babysitter. That's all you are. You cannot express the warrior that you are. Women are warriors. If you ever see a cat, a female cat, or a, 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 any female animal, a female bear, when you threaten their family, they're ready to go to war. And these males stop these women from developing into what they could be. And the reason why you do that as a male is because she might outdo you. This is the reason why the white man, this is the reason why the black man, this is the reason why they suppress, this is the, this is the reason why they keep women on a string because these women will probably rise up and outperform them. That's the reason why. They put obstacles in your way. This is the reason why they harass you, the women, because you will outdo them and it's real embarrassing for them that a woman outdo them. I don't care as long as the job get done, me personally. There are a lot of women who are bodybuilders, who take martial arts. A lot of them can easily kick the, kick the ass of another of a man, easy. If you got the skill. I'm just glad you on my side. I don't chip off of that. If women can be the greatest scientists, the greatest fighters, whatever, I'm just glad the women on my side. But see, that's not how these men, so-called men, think. They are the superior. They are the dominant. It's all about them because they've been indoctrinated with, 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 with these women-hating religions and this woman-hating mindset. They do not see the sisters as an equal. And these men sit behind the scenes and they abuse our women. So by the time you, got, you get to the 1970s, because the brothers have not treated our sisters right. You beat up on our women. You beat up on, our, on the children. Women start talking feminism. It begins to attract the soul sisters. So you Negroes always talking about Oh, the feminism, oh, the feminists, 
It was the black man that drove the sisters into the arms of the white woman and her feminism. So if you want to blame somebody, blame your damn self. You done it. Because you're not fair to her. You abusive. You a bastard. And not only did you drive her, the soul sister, to feminism, but you drove her to be to lesbian, to being a damn lesbian too. Because, because when she getting abused, she couldn't talk to your ass because you're an abuser. So she started looking for comfort to another woman. And then she began to, to integrate and talk with the white woman. Next thing you know, now she's a damn lesbian. You drove her to being a lesbian, and you drove her to being a damn feminist. So if you want to blame somebody for that, you need to blame your damn self. Men done that. Now you here crying. O'Shea Jackson say, men are victims. They need an outlet to cry. They need an outlet so they can defend themselves. Okay, let's let's keep let's keep going with this timeline. You got women mistreated and abused, raped, her children raped and molested for hundreds of years. For hundreds of years. Where was the woman? Not only the black woman, all women all over the earth. Where is her platform to speak out? Who's on, who was defending her for hundreds of years? And here you are crying for some damn men. So let's move the timeline up just a little bit more to the, what's up there, Brother John Harry? Let's move the timeline up to the 1980s. The late 1980s, you got you got the beginning of rap music. When rap music first come out, thank you, brother John. When black, when rap music first came out, it was happy music. It was party music. When rap music first came out. Now prior to the rap music as we know it, during the 1960s, you could do a Google search and look up those brothers called the Last Poets. Uh, Gil Scott Heron, you had brothers like that. They actually was rapping back in the 1960s. But now we move the timeline up to the late 1980s, we got, uh, I mean, the early 1980s, rap music start coming out. It was party music. Rap music was party music. That's what it was. Hip hop, hippie, hippie, hippie to the hip, hip hop, you don't stop the, whatever. I know what I'm talking about because I was, I was living. I lived this. I don't need a history book. I don't need a history book. I don't do no, I don't have to research a damn thing. I was living it. So, pretty soon, rap music became militant. You got public, public enemy. You got KRS One. It's still party music. You had Will Smith, DJ, uh, uh, the Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff. But then, as you know, so-called gangster rap start coming up. And one of the things that they say about gangster rap, this is what I like about gangster rap, they say, oh, it's real. This was happening in the hood.
gangster rap was known for calling our sisters bitches and hoes and other other filth and you as a black man even to this day you go by those records because you like hearing other men call our women out of their names sisters started complaining I did not see no men with those sisters to try to stop this why why just another way to harass and demean and exploit our women now you talk about black men need a, a, de a defense now you talking about black men need a platform the black men got a damn platform what did they do they called the sisters hoes and bitches for decades and you bought them damn records and the sisters, stupid enough, they did this, they bought the records too. And they called themselves hoes and bitches. When you say ho and a bitch, they make a reference to the sisters. Nobody else. And you know this. Hey there, Key. And you didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing. These are your, this is your mother. Your sisters, your aunties. And you let other men call them hoes and bitches and, and, and worse. And now, here you are, after our women since, since slavery because she don't have a man she been suffering for hundreds of years and now you on a YouTube channel and you crying about what about what what they say about men a lot of it is true that's why I hurt your ass. Cause it's true. And now she finally in a position she can speak. You didn't complain when you was the one, our gender was the abuser. And she couldn't defend herself. Now she's in a position to defend herself. The same thing with the races. The racists don't like us talking about slavery. The racists don't like us talking about redlining and police brutality and all these different things because we got a voice. The abuser, the oppressor, never wants to, wants to hear about what they done to somebody. What about, what about the, the crime that black people do against white folks. What about your damn crime? Going on 500 years, buddy. There's no comparison. There's no comparison. There's nothing these sisters can say that can compare to the dirt these black men have done to the sisters since the end of slavery. What's up there, brother Mike? I don't want to hear it. And I will stand with them because they are in the right. I'm not going to sit back and let them lie on you. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let I'm not going to sit back and let somebody just outright lie on white folks. If the white man didn't do it, 
I'm not gonna sit back and say, just because I don't like white folks or whatever, Caucasian people, I'm not gonna sit back and say, yeah, yeah, that's right, no. Because that would make me an unjust person. That would, that would make me just as foul as your happy ass is. But if you're gonna tell the story, O'Shea, then tell the complete story. Instead of running around here trying to play victim. Black man ain't no damn victim. You become just like your, your oppressor. And if you ever listen to the brothers that come to O'Shea's platform, when you listen to them, they are nothing but dark-skinned versions of the Pecklewood. Their idea of success is like the Pecklewood. Their idea of looking at our women, or women in general, is like the Pecklewood. You ain't nothing but a dark-skinned version of the oppressor. And now, the racists are, are upset because the victims speak out. And you are upset because now the black woman, the soul sisters, have a voice. And now you are upset. I know. I know how men have been conditioned in this society. how we as men regardless of race I know how American men and men all over the world I know how we are conditioned how we supposed to look at women all over the world I'm gonna stand with mama I'm not gonna call the, the women God cuz I'm not into that but I'm gonna stand with mama. I'm gonna stand with my mama. You wanna stand with ragged ass daddy that don't provide nothing. He don't protect. He don't build a damn thing. The only thing he can do, good, do is go to work, get drunk, come home, and beat up on his wife and children. This is what you see all over America. All these men in Chicago do whatever they want to do. Shoot their grandmama on her porch. The little children came to school and these so-called men don't do nothing. Then they come on O'Shea channel crying about what do and don't do. Bunch of sissies, a bunch of cowards. I know, I know how you talk about women behind women back. See, these type of men don't like me. Because I've been around your kind. And I get on your case. And you look at me like something wrong with me. No, something wrong with you. If the women are ratchets, Whatever these women problem is, you need to look at your damn self. Because even in your religion, your religion says that the man is supposed to be a reflection of God, the woman is a reflection of that man, and the children are a reflection of that woman and of their parents. So if the woman is a reflection of men, and she's a ratchet, she's a whole need to look at yourself because the reality is you are home. you the old okie doke yeah and he been giving you the old uh the old weenie weenie since slavery and apparently your happy ass must enjoy it the only thing that you can do is blame blame women the women do this huh the women uh, the we what man gonna sit around and spend hours talking about a damn weed 
a damn hairstyle. And, and the sisters, you will never satisfy these pieces of trash because you can wear your hair natural and they're going to call you a bald head bitch. So it makes no difference. You cannot please these sewer rats. Whether you wear your hair natural Whether you wear your hair natural Or whether You do what you feel you want to do I don't give a damn But see this is the thing about the sisters The sisters love you And when you show her love And we love each other and, uh, and when the sisters see that we as men love her with her natural hair, that's what she gonna do. Like she basically was doing during the 60s. They had weaving wigs in the 60s. But it was all about loving ourselves. Loving each other. And so the sisters was expressing themselves in that manner. But now she don't give a damn about you. I'm gonna do my thing. I don't need a man. And she proved she don't need your happy ass. I don't give a damn how many children she got. I can raise these children by myself. You can kick rocks. And you ain't nothing but a hoe. So you go find another woman to lay up with because you don't give a damn about your children. You really don't give a damn about your children. You don't blame the sisters about child support. As a man, these are your children. You should never it should never get to the point you allow the Pecklewood to get involved in your business because you don't want to take care of your children. Because you don't want to work. Well, you work long enough to get those babies. I don't feel sorry for your ass on child support. And many of you pay child support, that ain't nothing. $800 a month. You got six, seven children. That ain't no damn money. But see, you a slave. And the massa took care of all, all the children that the slave made. The massa took care of those children. And you do the same thing in 2019. Then you blame the woman You blame the woman for child support. No, you need to blame your damn penis. Blame your penis for child support. Keep your damn penis in your pants. Get a vasectomy. There's all kinds of ways to prevent making babies. You don't want to accept the responsibility for what you do. So now you cry on O'Shea Duke Jackson channel cause these men, cause now the sisters can talk, you don't want to accept the responsibility for what you do. Because the real hoe, the real bitch is you. <laughs> following, following this, this white man. Thinking like, like you're oppressive. And so now you catching the same hell that the races are catching. All over the world, people are speaking out against this racist. All over the world, you see women rising up against these retarded ass, hate-filled men all over the world. Little by little, it's got to come to an end. The black man 
and woman of America, it's time for you to be free from these races. John Henry no 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 I'm not gonna let you get away with that white man pimping game John Henry is saying that the child support system is the white man pimping game no you the damn pimp you made these babies and you got the white man paying for them you the damn pimp the white man putting shoes on your baby's feet, feeding your children, clothes on your children's back. You're not doing it. How the hell are you getting pimped? A lot of these sisters, if you take care of your children, they will not go to child support. They will not go to court. I know a lot of sisters right now, they was forced they was forced to get involved in the court system. These are not her babies. It's not fair for her to take care of these babies by herself. I don't care what the white man do for himself. I'm talking about us. Stop using distraction tactics. Stop using distraction tactics. Got another bozo in there, don't want to take care of his children. See, that's another thing. See, let me tell you something about me. I'm going to take care of my children, even if I have to starve, even if I have to pick cans off the street. I'm going to take care of my children. My grand uncle, my grand uncle worked four jobs to take care of his children. You want to lay around and play video games and watch and play on YouTube all damn day long. You made children, you gotta go out there and support them. Collect bottles. Sweep floors. That's right, Keaton. Black man gotta do better. When I was growing up, I seen men work three, four jobs. They swept floors, they cut grass, they did whatever they had to do to take care of their children, and guess what? They, was, they didn't worry about no damn child support. No, it's, you got a bunch of pieces of trash leeches that don't, don't, don't want to take responsibility for what you do. You can take that on somewhere and kick rocks. Some of these guys taking care of another man's children. They leave the mother of that child and go to another woman that got children and take care of those children and don't take care of his own babies. And you know this. A troll gonna call me a simp. See, simp, simp is a word that came from the white man. That's not even your word that you made up. That's something that these old women hating Pecklewoods made up. And there they go, copy, see, like I told you. They are nothing but chocolate covered versions of their masa. That's all they are. So I'm gonna stand with my sisters, I'm gonna stand with the women. When the brothers do right, I'll be right there with you. I'm not gonna stand with you when you're wrong. John Henry, nobody told your happy ass to smoke crack. Nobody told you to do crack. Nobody told you to do heroin. We always keep blaming somebody for the crap we do. In the 1980s, there was crack. How come I'm not a crackhead? How come I'm not a crackhead? I was around people that did crack. I was around people that smoked weed. I was around people that did those things. I was not interested. Where, where 
is it? Where's the evidence to show that the white man said, smoke this crack? You was poisoning yourself. Stop these damn, these damn excuse making. Keep making excuses. Ain't nobody put no crack in your mouth. You did it voluntarily. All this stuff voluntarily. You ain't no damn slave. You don't want to accept responsibility for what you do. It's not like you got hooked on crack because they was putting it in your food. They was putting crack in the air and you was breathing it. That's not what happened. You voluntarily went out there and got the hair on. You voluntarily got the crack. You voluntarily smoking this weed right now. You don't know what this is what this is what your enemy know about you. Your enemy know you're a pleasure seeker. He knows that you catching hell in your life. And you just want to get away. You just want to get away from this. Hey, what's up there, Joe? See, your enemy knows that you're a pleasure seeker. And he knows and he knows you just want to get away from it. That you won't, that you will not do what is necessary to get yourself out of the condition. So you want the easy way out. So you smoke some hair on, crack, you smoke your little weed. You go to church. It's, it's an epidemic that you brought on your damn self. You brought it on yourself. I don't want to hear that crap. It's an epidemic that you brought on yourself. Because you're a pleasure seeker. You're looking for an easy way out. So you turn to Jesus. You turn to Allah. You turn to crack. You turn to heroin. You turn to marijuana. Because y'all looking for an easy way out. And your enemy know you're looking for an easy way out. Because the real way out is to fight your way out. And you're too much of a coward to do that. So you turn to crack. And Jesus. And Allah. And whatever else you can get your hands on. If you want some pleasure. Find some pleasure kicking your enemy in his ass. That's the pleasure you need to be, that you need to seek. But you're too cowardly for that. These guys that's talking. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for the, the ability to hide behind a picture, most of you wouldn't have nothing to say. You wouldn't say nothing. Because you're scary. You're scared that other people will see what you have to say. It might affect your job or whatever, and you're scared. But see, social media, you can come and write and talk, hiding behind a picture. I'm right here in your face. Do what you got to do. I stand on mine. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong, I stand on mine. I don't know John Henry. Apparently, they find pleasure in smoking crack and smoking weed and whatever else. White man didn't put that in your mouth. You put it in your own mouth. You want to make excuses for people? I do that here. I don't do that here. I don't make excuses.
So now here we are in 2019. You have the nerve to come on your platform and talk about how defenseless the majority, the majority of domestic domestic violence cases is men being no. How is that defenseless? Platform. You need a platform to defend men. I won't be on your platform defending no men. Men need to straight need to. Men need to straighten themselves up and fly right. That's what men need to do. Oh, but you're not a man. You're a damn slave. And you will continue to cry as usual and keep copying your masa because and, and, and going by what the Bible said, what the Ryan said, these woman hating religious books. You sisters need to get away from the Bible. You need to get away from the Quran. That's what you need to do. Get away from these religious books. And I guarantee you, you let that Bible go, let that Quran go, and let some of these old women hating black conscious pro-black teachers, let that stuff go. There's a brother, not gonna say his name, but y'all probably know who I'm talking about. That's his thing. He take the, he take the soul sister and put the sisters on his page Naked, naked, half naked, on his page with string in her ass. That's what he think about you. That's all you are, a piece of meat. You have no brain. You just something to use, something to make babies with. That's all that you are. Black power family. How the hell you gonna have black power and your woman is, ain't nothing but a slave? What kind of power is that? You need her on your side. You need your children. You need the elderly. We need all ourselves together. And you wonder why you can't get nothing going. Because not only did the Pinklewood divide you, you divide yourself. If you're going to tell the story, O'Shea, then tell the whole story. Don't come on here and cry me a river like black men are victim. Black men ain't no damn victim. Not when it comes to the sisters. No, you ain't no victim. You a victim when it comes to racism, white supremacy. These sisters ain't did a damn thing to you like that to be treated the way they've been treated since slavery. So I'm, on, I'm siding with mama. I'm siding with mama. I don't care what you Negroes say. I'm gonna side with my mama. And that's, that's, that's the reason why back in the day, when I was growing up, the brothers side with mama. Don't talk about my mama. That's something you don't do. I don't care what mama is. I don't care if your mama really was a prostitute, a crackhead or whatever she was. Don't talk about my mama. They might give, they might give you a break when it comes to daddy. Don't talk about my mama. When you go look at the old sitcom, remember when somebody said, said something about somebody's mama? Those are fighting words. Now, you won't fight for your mama at all. I got a troll in my chat room. Since he don't like mama, he must be looking for that, for that, that pole. That's what he looking for. Since he got a problem with women, he looking for a pole. He looking, he looking to get ramrodded. Ain't that what you looking for, Donnie? You looking for, for that, for that long, getting long stroke. That's what you're looking for. Since you got a problem with women, you must love men. <laughs> yeah. 
You must love men. And if you notice, these guys like hanging around men. That's what they do. They love hanging around men. When I was in the nation of Islam, every chance I got, I was with the MGT. The MGT is the female, is the female version of the female counterpart of the FOI in the nation of, of Islam. Every chance I got, I was hanging with the sisters. And the sisters loved me being around. Here you got guys, that's right Key, they too busy blaming everybody but themselves. And since they don't blame themselves, they get their, their situation just get worse. Yeah, these guys, they hang with nothing, other men, always around other men. This Donnie guy, talk about he love women. You a damn lie. You a fake. You put on, I love women front, but you really want a man. That's what you really want. You don't love no women. Because if you love women, you be right here standing with me. You will stand with mama. No, you are an explorer. Yeah, you love women. You want them to be your slave. You want them to be submissive to your weak ass. That's what you want. You want a slave. Yeah, you love some women. Just like this racist love black people. You know why this racist love black people? Because you bow down to them. Because you view them as a superior. You let them get away with everything. They don't do no wrong. Yeah, so you have, you have Caucasian people, they love them black folks. Like that uh, representative, what's his name? Elijah Cummings, whatever his damn name. He just died. They praising that Negro. You know why? Because he was a non-threat. Because he was kick kissing them in the ass. That's the reason why. And that's the kind of woman you want. You want a man. A lot of y'all cats is down low. So my thing, if you're going to tell the story, just like these races, they don't tell the whole story. To and you've been kicking black people, soul brothers and sisters in the ass going on 500 years. What kind of victim are you? What kind of victim is this black man? You been That's right, Key. These Negroes, the only thing they think about is, is sports and getting drunk and abusing women and other nonsense. When you straighten up and fly, I will too. I will fly right with you. But right now, you want to play this victim role and you're not a victim? Not, not to black women, not to soul sisters. Yeah, you are a victim of racism white supremacy, but you're not a victim. This, this soul sister done everything she could to love your happy ass for a long time. I see the reason why. She's sick of it. She's sick of the abuse. She's sick of the mistreatment. She's sick of the fake love that you show her. I don't blame these women. I sure don't. I understand why they behave and why they act the way they do. Mother. Mother is life. The only thing father can do is help make life, but he can't bring life into this reality. And he cannot nurture. He cannot nurture. He cannot feed life. Once the life get into this, the only thing he can do is help. That's all you can I'm going to stand with mother. 
I'm not going to stand with these undercover pedophiles. Undercover gay and homosexual guys. And other trash. Freaks. I'm not going to stand with that. When you act like a brother, stand up like a man, and do what men are supposed to do, I'll be with you 100%, 1,000%, and we can help. But you're a woman beater, you're a woman basher, and you don't want to take responsibility for the things that men do. I can't, I'm not going to do that. Make excuses for yourself. I'm not going to do that. Take responsibility for yourself and stop making excuses. You gonna tell the whole story or you don't need to talk at all. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank y'all for joining me. And we already found thousand as the, the woman haters that come that come in the chat room. <laughs> Thank you for joining. But uh Thank you, YouTube, for giving me the uh, opportunity to speak. Thank you, Facebook. And it's important. I wish us love, peace, and soul.